miss every single thing you missed from the episode designed from Bluey. Enjoy. Ya llegamos. Y esto es Al Freli. Let's start with the basics. The Sang is the biggest episode of Bluey so far, having a duration of 28 whole minutes, which is four times longer than usual. Also, we want to address a common belief on social media. No, this is not the final episode of the series. It has already been confirmed that there will be another season, although the crew behind Bluey will take a long and well-deserved break before they start working on it. In fact, The Sang isn't even the final episode of the third season, as there's still one more episode called Surprise which is supposed to premiere on Sunday, April 21 in Australia. However, as of the date of recording this video, no promo has been released to confirm this information. Even still, if the date is accurate, it's very likely that the episode may have already premiered by the time this video is released. Last year, an extended version of the series intro was released, featuring some of Bluey's friends. Initially, we thought that this new intro was going to be used in this episode, you know, given its length, but no. The intro was the same as usual. Right off the bat, we see the for sale sign for the house, which was introduced in the previous episode Ghost Basket. In that episode, both Bandit and Chili gradually introduce the idea of selling the house to Bingo Bluey through games and make-believe. This is their usual teaching method on the show. But this time, Bandit and Chili forgot to explain to Bingo that selling their house would involve moving to another city. This is why Bingo is seen so chill throughout the episode, until reality smacks her like a ton of bricks. Bingo and Bandit's game on the swing seems like a combination of come here go away from daddy put down and the pretending to sleep beat from fruit bat. As the family heads out, we see a real estate agent showcasing the house. He is Bucky Dunstan, who we've seen before. Well, it was actually just a drawing of him in the episode Dragon, as he is the same guy who discouraged Bandit from drawing. Ugh, Bucky Dunstan. He was in my class. I think he's a real estate agent now. Fun fact. A day after Ghost Basket Air, the house was listed on the Australian real estate site domain.com.au with Bucky as the seller. The site has a couple of fun details, but our favorite is that the location listed for the healer's house is the Oxley Dog Park. Even though the site put the house up for sale, it's all just a simulation. However, here's something you may not know. In February 2022, there was a real-life reconstruction of the healer house, and it was rented out for a couple of days through Airbnb. Sadly, after the event, it went back to its boring all self. Bucky tells the sheepdog couple that Queensland summers are in that hut. Okay, first of all, it's common knowledge that Bluey is based in Brisbane, Queensland, although this is the first time it's been directly mentioned in the show. Secondly, according to our research, Brisbane can get pretty hot, especially with the humidity, although, to be fair, this depends on your perspective, as many places in Mexico have it way worse. <laughs> While on their way to school, there are several easter eggs. First off, the family passes by an electricity box that actually exists in real life. This box is located in front of the Stateford State School and was painted with bluey themed artwork by the series crew. Additionally, Bingo is playing the jumping hand game from the road trip and we can see Lila with her mother at a bus stop. In the classroom with Calypso, it's revealed that Pretzel has two moms. What? Didn't you notice? Don't worry, we didn't either the first time. It happened so quickly that it's easy to miss. Yeah, like when my guinea pig ran away, my mom's told me he might come back. It was even mistranslated in other languages such as Spanish. While everyone shares sad anecdotes, Winton mentions that since his parents divorced, his dad has been very lonely, to which the terrorists respond that their mom really likes Winton's dad. This is a story that has unfolded over several episodes in the background, as we see him going on dates in both the cafe and quiet game. However, in later episodes like Perfect and Promises, he is seen alone and sad. Fortunately, his sadness wouldn't last long as finally, in TV show, we witness the beginning of the romance between him and the terrier's mom. The story recounted by Calypso titled The Farmer originates from China and dates back to the 2nd century BCE, at least according to Wikipedia. It explores the idea of how bad luck can turn into good luck and vice versa, something we see with various examples throughout the episode, but we'll talk about this later on. For now, just know that the phrase we'll see was originally the title of the episode during its production. After this, Rusty wants to play ARMY, just like in the episode of the same name. Also, all of Bluey's classmates 
Beats make an appearance and have lines in this episode except Sneakers, who hasn't spoke since Typewriter. This is rather interesting as he's included in the extended intro and not Mackenzie. On their way back from school, Bandit's friend Fido and Bluey's friend Winnie from the episode Café make a brief cameo. They also pass by a Hammer Barn store from the episode of the same name. At bedtime, Bingo has 15 plushies. Among them we can see the gecko and yellow bird from Copycat, Kim Jim from Kobe and a green mushroom with a bee, and not to Vine Sauce. This is a popular YouTube and Twitch gaming channel whose main members, Vinny and Joel, have already had their own cameos in the series. Although the wedding takes place in the backyard, the fish pond built in Trades is never seen, although it's likely just due to camera angles. Bluey, Bingo, Muffin and Socks are the flower girls, meaning they are responsible for scattering petals before the bride walks down the aisle. Flowers for you, flowers for you, flowers for you! Interestingly, the first and only sneak peek we had of the episode for a long time was of the girls in their outfits at the juice store, courtesy of this behind the scenes image from the show. As Frisky gets into her car, we can see that her car's license plate reads Frisk. Also, Stripe and Trixie still have the luxury car they were showing off in Pizza Girls. The gnome that Frisky kicks is named Jeremy, and in fact, Socks expresses regret for him by uttering his name. Poor Jeremy. This is a callback to the episode Backpackers, where she was also present. Chili, Stripe and Bandit hum the Cat Squad intro as they prepare for the wedding. This is the same show Bingo was watching in Total Boy. Furthermore, the entire intro was jokingly uploaded to Bluey's official YouTube channel. When a Stripe and Bandit question whether they are allowed to cover the daughter's mouths, it can be interpreted to some extent as breaking the fourth wall, with them pondering if this is something that can be shown in a preschool show. In the trunk of the van, which is revealed to be named Bobo, Bobo! Yeah. The same umbrella that Chili used in Rain can be spotted, along with Chattermax. Chili says that if all the seats are occupied, a child older than 4 years old can sit in the front seat, which is actually in line with Queensland's traffic laws. The first person Chili calls to ask about Frisky is Cookie, a new character who hadn't been mentioned until now. According to the official ABC Kids page on Facebook, Cookie is Frisky's roommate and friend, whom we saw at the wedding. When the gang arrives at the juice store and Bluey finds a coin, Bingo says, Find a penny, pick it up, all day long you have good luck. Apparently, this is a popular saying in several English-speaking countries, although there's another part that says, give the penny to a faithful friend, then your luck will never end. This is actually what ended up happening, as giving the coin to Muffin, Socks and Bingo for the visor caused it to get stuck, allowing the sheepdog couple to use it, making them change their minds. In Rat's photo, he and his siblings are seen wearing the latest fashion trend, watermelons as helmets. Nah, apparently this is a tradition in cricket games. When they stop at the park for Socks to use the restroom, the same butterfly that Bingo and Lila rescue in the episode slide reappears. This butterfly is a Ulysses butterfly, which is a tourist emblem of Queensland. Additionally, we learn that Bingo named it Flappy. The way Chili located Frisky thanks to this butterfly is a nod to the butterfly effect, which, for those unaware, is the concept that small actions can have large and unforeseen consequences. In this case, Bingo and Lila saving a little caterpillar from being squashed by Bandit in slide led to several different outcomes, such as Chili finding Frisky, the wedding being saved, the sheepdog scene changing their minds about buying the healer's house, and ultimately enabled Bingo and Lila to happily grow up together. The place where Chili finds Frisky is called Mount Kuta, which can actually be seen in the letters of this sign. This is a popular spot in Brisbane, as it offers panoramic views of the city. According to Chili, Frisky and I used to come up here as teenagers to, um, think. Although by the way she says it, it's implied that they also used to drink at this place, which is a reference to The Simpsons. No, that was stolen from The Simpsons though, I can confirm that. that was, um, <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a line where he says, I've got to go do some thinking, and Bart says, I think he means drinking, so... Um... <laughs> now I've got to go somewhere and do some serious thinking. I'm sure he meant to say serious drinking. When Chile expresses how she feels about the move, she says... Of course I don't want to leave Bluey. You took your first steps in that house. This is a nod to the episode Baby Race, where we saw Bluey's first steps. 
Moving on to the wedding, we see Randy once again, who is Chili's sister and made her debut in Onesies. In that episode, it was revealed that she longed to have a child and probably a family, and now she is pregnant. Naturally, this raises several questions, such as how did this happen and who is the father? It's very likely that this will be addressed in a future episode. It's worth mentioning that Brandy's voice actress is listed in the credits despite not speaking. This might indicate that she previously had some dialogue but it was ultimately decided to save this whole topic for later. Besides Frisky's family, Chili's father, Mort, attends the wedding, along with Maynard, who was introduced in Grandad and is known to be a close friend of Mort. However, the nature of Maynard's relationship with Frisky and Chili's family remains uncertain. Additionally, it's confirmed that Bluey's grandfather, Bob, wasn't actually dead as many had speculated. He was simply off having a good time in India. Yeah, it's a bit random, but it does explain his absence for such a long time. Likewise, there have been letters and keepsakes from India in the healer's household, although they could also be from Bandit and Chili's backpacking days. The wedding is officiated by Busker, a background character who serves as a musician in several episodes. In fact, his design is inspired by Geoff Bush, the main composer of the series. In the episode Puppets, we saw a photo of Bandit and Chili's wedding, where they wore a full attire. However, this time Frisky only wears a veil and Rad wears just a white bow tie to distinguish himself from his siblings. In Double Babysitter, Frisky mentions that she only has three friends. Now, thanks to the wedding photos, we can deduce she was talking about Chili, Cookie, and Trixie. Frisky and I have an announcement. <gasps> No, mom, not that. Oh, biscuits. <laughs> During this moment, everyone laughs, except from the kids as they don't get the joke. Dad, yeah. how does the baby get in the lady's belly? <laughs> Just before the dance scene, Bingo says, Bob and Stripe are dancing like eagles. In certain areas of Australia, it's a tradition that when the song Eagle Rock by Daddy Cool plays, all the men pull their pants down to their ankles and start dancing. Although, well, in Bluey, no one wears pants. Good grief, he's naked! Additionally, in the dance scene, we see Nana and Bob doing the floss dance, a nod to the episode Grannies, Mort performing the Hopak dance, indicating he's still in good health, and the Chattermax that was hidden by Bluey's parents. The next day, when Bingo gets stuck on the railing, it's a reference to the episode Bingo. Additionally, when Bingo sees Bluey's bed being taken away, she uses her big girl bark from the episode Yoga Ball. Lastly, the name Bluey gives to the horse when she tells Bingo the former story is Midnight, as Chloe suggested in class. During the transition back to Mount Kutha, you can spot an Australian swallow from the episode onesies as well as the green balloon from Mom's school. Also, upon reaching the lookout, Cherry and Sippy from Trades can be seen. The sheepdog couple watches as Winston's dad puts his house up for sale, as he and the terrier's mom will now form a new family. This is something that fills both the terriers and Winton with great excitement. Moreover, Winton's father's house has the pool mentioned in the episode Helicopter. As the healer family gets ready to leave, we see Bingo sitting where her bed used to be, Wendy and Judo saying goodbye with her long hair, indicating that quite some time has passed since the episode Dirt, Bluey sitting on the porch with her headphones on, just like in the series album cover, and Chili in the kitchen looking at the spot where Bluey took her first steps. The emotional song playing during all of this is Lazarus Drug by Megan Washington, the same person who voices Calypso. The climax arrives when Bandit gets a call from Bucky, revealing that the buyers have opted for another house. Upon hearing the news, he throws away the for sale sign, which reminded us of the tactic seen in the Stickbird. Many speculate that perhaps this was the reason why Bandit was so worried in that episode, and while it's a good theory, it doesn't entirely align with what Bandit says. When you put something beautiful out into the world, it's no longer yours. Really. But what do you think? The entire episode is closely related to both the butterfly effect and the former story. To begin with, Stripe reveals Rat's plans to Frisky, resulting in the cancellation of the wedding. However, Rat realizes the importance of their relationship and they reconcile. Additionally, due to the cancellation of the wedding, Bluey manages to sit in the front seat, but they get stopped by a police officer, but he informs them of Frisky's location, but they miss her by a few seconds. But Bluey finds a coin. The sequence of events goes back and forth between good luck and bad luck,
sheepdog until they try to use the coin in the binoculars but it gets stuck but it's later used by the sheepdogs. Like this there are many other examples but mentioning them all would make us go on for too long. At the end we see the family happily enjoying fish and chips, a typical fast food meal in Australia. Meanwhile as the credits play we catch a glimpse of the fruit bats from Fruit Bat accompanied by a slower rendition of the series theme song. Before we wrap things up let's not forget Bluey's signature easter egg, the long dogs. These are hidden in every episode and in this case we spot three of them, one on top of Bluey's electrical box, another in Bubba's trunk and the final one in Buskers laptop. Finally, this episode has received an incredible reception from the general public, being the highest rated on IMDb with a score of 9.9 .9 out of 10. This is quite significant because, according to a couple of interviews with the show's crew, the reception of this episode could help determine whether Bluey will continue making longer episodes or even a movie. If you like this video, please subscribe and watch this other video where we explain the whole story behind the Lost Pilot episodes of Bluey. We love you all, bye!